So 2019 is over and I'm still wearing the same t-shirt and I wish I could say like, oh, new year, new me, but I look exactly the same. Nothing's really changed, okay? I still have the same hair. I still have the same t-shirts. Everything is absolutely the same. Now, in 2019, a lot of things did go well for me. I won't lie about that. However, in 2019, I also made a lot of mistakes that I have not mentioned just yet. So in this video, I'm going to tell you guys the seven mistakes I made in this year, well, 2019, last year, which was yesterday. But the concept is, guys, I'm going to tell you guys the problems I had, also solutions. That way, you don't have to go through what I went through, and you can do a lot better than I did this year. By the way, this year, my goal was to make around $3,000 every single month, and December, Literally like yesterday, I made around $23,000 and $58.10. So 10 cents is very important. People call me a liar all the time, so I always wanna put the 10 cents there so you guys know I'm not kidding. By the way, I have a full video on it. If you wanna watch it, link down below also. But in this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly the mistakes I made and how you can avoid it also. Now, if you guys don't know me, my name is Tiny Bryson. I'm an accountant and I upload videos on YouTube every single day day yes daily content every single day so this year 2020 we should have around 365 videos like we did almost like last year or so okay now do me a favor subscribe to the channel hit the bell to so get notified and also like smash destroy that like button okay really appreciate it. it helps a lot with the channel so thank you guys so much now comment down below guys and let me know what is your biggest goal your biggest goal for 2020 comment down below let me know and also let me know did you accomplish your biggest goal for 2019 yes or no by the way if you didn't just comment down below and let me know what was it why didn't you accomplish it and let's see if i can comment down below also with you and kind of find a solution to what you can do to accomplish it in 2020 because i always think there's always a solution to a problem so why not try to solve it okay i think i said that wrong but why not try to solve that problem now Let's stop procrastinating here because it's 2020 now and we want to go to the gym and then quit around like March. But the concept is, guys, let's talk about lesson number one that I learned in 2019 that I wish I learned a lot more earlier. Now, the first lesson is this, guys, okay? The first lesson is you don't always want to say yes just for money, okay? Money is great, but sometimes you don't have to say yes because sometimes that yes costs you a lot more than money. Now, Here's what happened, guys, okay? When I was, you know, starting the year, I said yes to every single opportunity. I said yes to doing movies. I said yes to doing editing. I said yes to doing anything out there that could make me money because I said, you know what? More money, more problems, but I want to have more problems because I want to cry in a Lambo. I don't want to cry in a Honda, all right? But in reality, guys, I figured out one thing. I figured out that when you say yes to someone, usually you might go with someone that might not even be your ideal client. Like rude people, people that are mean, give you bad customer service, give you a bad reputation. And sometimes, most of the times, you're better off just saying no, but you feel bad because you might say, hey, I'm rejecting a client, I'm saying no to money, and that's gonna ruin my business. But in reality, I found out one thing that you probably don't know, but here it is. Here's a solution to this problem, okay? The solution is this. I read the 80-20 rule, and it said this. It said, you know what, Tommy? 20% of your clients are responsible for 80% of all your income. And I said to myself, no, that's not true. It's not possible. So I went through all 37 of my clients for my business. I have 37 clients, 37 times around 0.20, around like seven to eight or 10 of my clients are responsible for around 80% of all the money one of my businesses makes me, and it's true. So what I did is this, okay, my solution was this. I stopped dealing with those people. So I said, you know what, I don't wanna do it anymore. No, 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 no. And usually those people that are always complaining, always saying something, something's wrong here, they always are crying and they're kind of crazy, they're rude to you, they curse at you, they're always having an excuse. Well, my answer is this, guys. Usually those people are more trouble than they're worth the money they gave you. And sometimes, most of the times, those people don't even compare to people on the like like the first percentile, like the 20% that give you like the most money. So I started saying no to a lot of people because I said, you know what? It's a lot more trouble than I want. So no, 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 even though I do want money, but I don't want money that way, okay? So try to find people, if you have a business out there, find people that match that 20 percentile, that 20%, and find people like that, 
and just get those people in your business because usually they're a lot more nicer and that's what you want, okay? So yes is not always the answer when it comes to business and making more money, all right? By the way, I mean this strictly for my business on the side, not for YouTube, okay? You guys can contact me on Instagram, my phone number, on YouTube, comment, do whatever you wanna do, okay? I really don't mind, okay? You guys are great. But I'm talking about business where you're talking to someone and they're being very rude to you. I don't, I don't appreciate that. So I said, you know what? I'm good. I'm good with that. Now, number two, guys, okay? Number two, second lesson I learned is that consistency is great. It's awesome. But consistency without change leads to a lot of problems. I can't, I don't know this word. I just forgot it, but it starts with a C. It's called like complication or contentation. I don't know, but it's basically like when you're stuck and you're just like doing the same thing over and over and you're content, but you shouldn't be content with that. But the concept is this, guys, okay? When I started doing a video every single day back in February, I was like, you know what? This is great. This is awesome. It's a challenge. It's very hard to do. But then like around like two months later, it got very easy. And then I said, you know what? Let's go to the gym every single day also. Then it got hard again. And then it got very easy like a month later. And then I said, you know what? Let's add a relationship to this. And then I said, like, okay, let's do that. Perfect. But then that also got very easy and it became a routine. Now, routines are great, but they keep you like this. That's not always good. So what I did is this. My solution for this is that, well, I'm going to do this in 2020, which is like today, starting today. But the concept is every single week, I want to start a new business. And for that business, I want to dedicate one month to try it out and learn as much as possible. And that way I can keep the excitement of all this stuff. Because again, you can do something over and over again, but as soon as stuff becomes a challenge, it gets very practical, very routine, very repetitive, and eventually you start getting really bored. And then you start procrastinating also. So the concept is, you want to always keep things changing, but always make sure they relate. So I'm not gonna start doing yoga or like, you know, ballet dancing. I'm gonna make sure that I keep things from a business perspective. That way I can keep improving from this perspective, but I could keep making things like new, that way it's exciting and always like, like I always look forward to it basically, okay? Now, lesson number three, guys. You can't always help everyone. Now, there's a great quote by Albert Einstein that says, you know what, you have to be careful with negative people because they always have a problem for every solution out there. And I didn't really believe this, to be honest, until I read a book by James Allen that said, um, Tommy, you can't help anyone that can't help themselves yet or doesn't want to help themselves yet. And even then, I said, no, it's not possible. It's not true. Everyone wants to be helped. But in reality, I was wrong. I admit it, okay? So in 2019, I tried to help one of my brothers. I won't say his name for privacy reasons. I don't want the CIA and the FBI after me. But basically, one of my brothers um, had problems and he asked me for money for like 20 bucks. I said, no, of course. And the reason is because I said, you know what? I can't give you the money, but I'll give you the knowledge that I have. And that way you can go out there and make the money yourself. Now, to me, that sounds awesome because again, I give you the knowledge. You can make a lot more than 20 bucks. Now he said, no, of course. And I told him, Hey, I have a solution. I have a plan. I have a blueprint. The blueprint is this. I want every time that you get paid set aside at least between 1% to 10%. Of course he said, no, too much money. But the concept is, I asked him to set aside from a $200 salary every single month. By the way, this is in DR, so in the Dominican Republic, it's a third world country. 200 bucks is not that bad over there, okay? But basically, I asked him to set aside $2 every time he got paid every single month. He said to me, I can't do it. And then, like a week later, I saw him on, you know, like Instagram and Facebook, and he was like in a club and like dancing, you know, like, um, like doing stuff he shouldn't do. And I was like, you know what? It's whatever. And I learned that, you know, when people are ready to be taught and want to learn, well, they learn very fast and they learn very quickly, but you can't help someone that doesn't want to be helped. So I kind of stopped doing that. And my solution is this, okay? My solution is if I'm talking to someone and they have a problem and I offer them three solutions and I offer to help them myself and they say no and they just keep like complaining, complaining, I start to listen, but very inactively. I just stop right, stop right there. I'd be like, okay, so... You don't want any help, you just want to be like listened to, but all you want to do is complain. So I just listen, but I'm not listening. So I might look like I'm listening, I'm, I'm like this, okay? But in reality, I'm not even there right there, okay? So the concept is, when you want to help someone, but they don't want to be helped, 
don't feel bad. Don't feel like you have to do everything you can. Don't give anyone money, okay? Give them solutions. And that's what I do. By the way, I only gave my brother once ever, ever 20 bucks. And it was because like um his sons needed clothes and stuff like that. And I said, you know what? I'll give you 20 bucks. And I also gave my dad like two to three hundred dollars. Like back in the days when he was in the hospital trying to fight for his life. He didn't make it, unfortunately. But um I don't give money. Okay, I give solutions and if no one wants your solutions, then if you give someone money over and over again, they just spend it over and over again. It doesn't change. Okay, so you don't want to do that at all. Make sure you give people solutions. If they're not ready to learn, well, you step away until they are ready to learn. Okay, now lesson number four that I learned guys is, you know, money does not equal happiness. Now, when I was 19, you couldn't tell me that. Okay, you couldn't tell me that. I was like, you know what? I need a lot of money because I need to be happy and I want to buy a house. By the way, okay, I'd rather cry in a Lamborghini instead of crying in a Honda. And I was like, I, I was set on this stuff okay but the concept is you know when i was making 60 bucks a week i wasn't as happy as you could probably tell okay because i was like under a lot of stress and i needed to pay bills i couldn't do anything basically but then eventually i started making more money i read more books thus i made more money also and then after i passed like around like three thousand bucks um things got like kind of like very easy and it stopped like being like you know money uh, makes me more happy because at that point it's like I have enough money coming in, so I don't really care that much to the point where it actually like makes me happy and makes like such a massive difference. So here's what happened, guys. Okay, when my dad um passed away, because I told you guys that already, right? Um, he 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 lost the fight, but when um the entire thing happened, I shift my mindset from trying to make money just for the sake of like living this like extravagant lifestyle, just doing things like that. I shift my focus from that to basically like you know what, I want to make a lot of money. To help more people out there like start schools like start hospitals in third world countries to help people like my dad and the entire thing is this guys when i shift my focus from money to value i made a lot more money and the more money i make um it's kind of like irrelevant but the concept is the more money i make it's kind of like how i keep score of how i'm going and where i'm gonna get and how fast i'm gonna get there because i might make um december like um twenty three thousand dollars but in reality compared to the money i'll need to accomplish my goals of like you know building schools and like creating like a whole foundation that's like self-reliant it's gonna take a lot of money like a lot more so the concept is if you think that money will equal happiness and it's because like you're really broke right now i get that that's fine but the more you shift your focus from just money and more into value, if you give people value, they'll pay you for that. And the more value you give, the more money you'll receive. So the concept is focus on value and having a goal and using money as kind of like a blueprint to how you're actually doing like compared to your goal. Okay. That's what I recommend. But just don't focus on just like, oh, money, money, money. That's going to make me happy. In the end, it, it doesn't make you happy. Okay. Like after like you can pay all your bills and have money like left over to do whatever you want. Like after that, it stops being more about money and more about like, okay, what else do I do now? Okay. So that's my main thing when it comes to money equals happiness or like, uh, I want to cry in a Lambo instead of a Honda. I cry on my bike, bro. I don't even have a car. Okay. So there you go. Now, number, <laughs> now number five guys, um, there's truly no competition out there externally for you. Now, what I mean is this guys, the competition should always be one person and that one person should always be you. Now tell me, what do you mean here? Okay. The answer is I didn't think so. All my life, I've been competing against my friends, uh, my family, people on YouTube, everywhere in the world, by the way. People didn't even know I was competing against, but I really was. I was competing against everyone out there. But I read this one book by David Goggins. Um, the book name, by the way, is um, You Can't Hurt Me. And in the book, he says, the only competition should always be yourself because that way you don't have any limits whatsoever because sometimes you compete against someone, but then they have a limit and then you stop right there. But if it goes against yourself, then you're always trying to overpass and surpass yourself, okay? Now... Here's what happened, guys, okay? Side story here. I had a friend, and this friend did not get into the college he wanted to get into, and I was very competitive with him. Now, when he got very low, very sad about the entire college thing, he was not performing as well as he usually used to. So my motivation to do better than him kind of was like, okay, so what do I do now? You know, you're doing bad. Um, the competition's kind of like whack. So what do I do? And the answer is I kind of started doing bad also because the competition was no longer there. Thus, I was no longer interested. But if I was motivated by myself like I am now, I would have still done better because, again, my only competition is myself. By the way, there is no scarcity in YouTube, in business, in money. There is an abundance of it. So if you have competition with someone that you might think you have competition with, 
I'm not saying to give away like copyrights, but I'm saying that if you can help someone help them, it doesn't really matter as much as you think it does. So I help everyone out there as much as I can. But at the end of the day, the only competition I have is against myself. Okay. Now lesson number six, guys, it is all about the reps. Now, if you don't know what reps is, reps when you go to the gym and you lift like over and over again, that's what reps is. Like you do three reps, like one, two, three, or five reps, one, two, five, whatever it is. And basically reps is work, reps is consistency. Now, the concept is guys, I've been trying and doing YouTube since I was like 12 years old. By the way, I'm 22 years old. So that's like literally like a decade of work on YouTube trying to understand exactly what I want to be, what I want to accomplish. And you know, at some point you can do great reps, like great work at the gym or bad work at the gym. Now you might say, Tommy, well, the more you do something, the better you'll be at it. And the answer is yes, usually it's correct, but it doesn't matter if you do something over and over and over again, if you're doing it incorrectly. So the main thing I learned is that guys, once you learn to do something, you have to learn how to do it correctly. Because when I did YouTube back then for those 10 years or so, like trying to do it over and over again, starting again, then stopping the concept is I learned that. I was doing it wrong. I was putting the consistency, the work, the reps, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter because I was doing it incorrectly. So the minute I started doing things differently and stopped blaming people around me and more about myself and what I was doing wrong, I started to grow a lot more. So whatever you're doing that's not working, stop looking externally and look internally at what you can do to improve your life. Okay. So what I did was this solution is this guys. Okay. I took courses, read books on this stuff and I learned every single ounce of information for people that actually accomplished it. And that way, um, three months later, 10 months later, I started seeing a huge change in my progress. And number seven and the last lesson I learned for 2019. So here you go guys. Um, 2020, um, new me, um, new you, you know, so the last lesson is you want to be careful who you listen to. So listen to people that have what you want and actually accomplish something that you want to accomplish in the future. Okay. Now, all my life, I've been listening to my friends, my family, my teachers. And this sounds like a great, like a great idea. But in reality, all this led was to a lot of doubt. My friends told me, don't do YouTube. It won't work. It doesn't make any sense. My family told me, just make sure you go to college and just do everything great. My teachers told me, don't start a business. It'll fail. Most of them fail all the time. And what this actually did to me was actually create a baseline to what I wanted and what I didn't want. And I knew for sure I didn't want to be my friends. I didn't want to be my family members. I want to be my own teachers. I wanted to be my own person and I wanted to achieve what I wanted to achieve. So here's my main tip for this guys. If you have negative people around you, negative people are great for one thing. And that is to tell you what not to do. They have a lot of advice about how they failed, how things don't go great, how this happened, how that happened. Listen very attentively and make sure you don't do what they did. And that way you don't make those same mistakes, but do not, I repeat, do not spend all your days, all your time listening to negative people. Listen to once and be out. Okay. Don't spend all your time there because eventually if that person plants a seed in your head of negativity, that can bloom into something incredibly dangerous for yourself. Okay. Especially when you start out, make sure you just don't like listen all the time to those people. Listen to learn. Don't listen to just like keep in. Okay. So constantly experiment with what they're saying and try it out for yourself and figure it out for yourself. Okay. Experiment, experiment, experiment. And guys, that is basically it. Those are seven things I learned in 2019. And if I knew all these seven things right here, I would have done a lot better. But thankfully it's a new year, a new me, same t-shirt and it's 2020. And in 2020, I will be doing every single thing I did here and comment down below and let me know which one of these mistakes did you also make? Okay. Comment down below. Let me know. And as always guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, like this video, we really appreciate it. Also on top of that, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get notified. And if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, una uno, just DM me on Instagram, Tiny Bryson. And before I go, if you want to watch a video on exactly how I made $23,000, in one month of December, we'll watch this video right here. And if you want to start to channel right now, click my face right here. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace.